Welcome back. So today I actually have something that is going to be true horror on this channel. Something I didn't really think I was ever going to be able to achieve. Not fully, but today I think I'm going to achieve my dream of truly bringing something horrific to your screens. I activated my old MySpace account. And oh boy, is there truly some horrific things on this old account. So just for some context, I'm 27 years old, which is pretty old when you talk about youth. Not in terms of the full lifespan of a human being. And in that relatively long life, I remember what life was like not only before social media, but also before the internet. It was a derelict place and we don't like to talk about it. So I was actually part of the generation that remembers social media becoming a thing and being the demographic for social media. And some of the first ever social medias out there was stuff like Bebo and MySpace. MySpace was awesome and I loved it. And then I hated when Facebook came along. The reason why I liked MySpace was because you could customize your page to like look however you wanted it to look, like you could like change it. Imagine a Facebook page, but instead of just like night mode, which I don't even think Facebook has, you could like put dicks on it or whatever in the wallpaper and you could make the cursor all magical. It was so fun, so great. And that's why I hate Facebook and it took me so long to get onto Facebook and it did not take me too long to get back off of Facebook. Don't, don't use Facebook. Now in rediscovering my MySpace account, I realized that not all the photos are there. Some of them have actually been lost to time. And I checked and this account was last used in like 2008. Some of the dates are all weird because like some of it's like, this is the date that we changed MySpace from this to this. And some of the dates are, this is the time, uh, this is when Tom died. Rest in peace, Tom. Everyone's first ever MySpace friend. Never wavered, never unfollowed, never judged. So we're going to have a look at some photos that have been lost for about 10 years. I have not seen them. I reactivated my account, I had a quick look to see what was there. I did not peruse, but I do know that there are some horrors in here, so we are going to look at them together. So let's open my photos. Let's go to my account and let's have a look at my photos, shall we? Oh boy! So let's go to, they say mixes is where everything is, but I, I found everything in photos, so I don't... Oh boy, okay, so let's open up the first one here. No, 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 no spoilers. So this one. This, this boy here. Let's, let's talk about this boy right here. So, this is actually going to tie into another video that I'm going to be doing on this channel at some point, which is the origins of why I dress the way that I do, even though I didn't listen to goth music and didn't know what goth music was for a very long time. Because some people might be confused, it's like, well, if you don't listen to goth music, how did you dress like that? Well, there's a lot of ways. There's a lot of reasons why people dress like this. So this will be a different video, but right here, I am balls deep into my Visual K uh, phase. I'm about 17 here, 17 years old. I got my Avenged Sevenfold t-shirt. I back comb my hair like all the J-Rockers did. And I even wore the fingerless gloves that everyone did back in 2000 and, oh wait, if I was 17. 2008. So moving on, so this is a, a, an edit I did because uh, I was really good at Photoshop back then. As you can see, I was I had the capabilities of turning images green. That was actually one of my favorite hoodies. It was by, I think, Poison Industries, and it had like this asymmetrical zip that went from like here all the way up to the face, all the way down to the, the, the left corner of your body, and it was all like black and gray striped. It was amazing, and I loved it, and I have no idea where it went. It was my favorite thing. And they don't sell it anymore. It's not on eBay anymore. So yeah, I had long hair and I wore this super, like, long, lethal, spiky choker all the time. Oh, okay, so now this one is a really old one. Uh, I don't know if some of you have actually seen this one, but this is a really old one. This is actually part of a set, which I don't have, because um, I think the rest of them were deleted. This is uh, me at the age of 15. I think this is 2006. So metalcore, modern metalcore had only been going for a couple of years, I think two years at the time, two or three years, and I was a big fan, especially of Bullet Valentine, which is why I played a Jackson guitar. So I had the long hair, and I had the vest top, and I had like these tartan shorts, and I had white socks pulled up and a pair of ankle converse. I basically look like Matt Tuck from 2005 because that is exactly the look I was going for. So it plays Jackson guitar, and there's the fingerless gloves, always prevalent, always around. They are omniscient. So right here, I'm actually, and you can actually see on my vest top, it says Demonic Headcase. Demonic Headcase, spelt with a K, because Edge Lord for life, was actually my original band. It was my first ever band that I made, was, was Demonic Headcase. So right here, I'm actually playing a festival, and we played a couple of covers, well, my Valentine covers. We used to play Suffocating on a Wizard of Sorrow, which is still a great tune, and we used to play Gunshot to the Head of Trepidation by Trivium, and then a bunch of originals. Oh, and we also did a metal cover of Eye of the Tiger, which was dope. Oh. Okay, so this one, um, I mean, 
I mean, let's skip that one. All right, okay, so now this one is, I, I could not tell you where that, no, do you know what? I know where that is. That was my first long-term girlfriend's house. So whenever I was 15, I fell out with my parents and I moved out and I moved out with my uh, girlfriend at the time. She was 14, I was 15. Her mother didn't really mind me just living in the house and we sort of had our part of the house. So it was like having our own place, kind of. And I'd like moved all of my guitar equipment, I moved all the stuff here, and we just sort of lived independently in that house. Her mother would occasionally come in with food on a plate and we'd eat it. But I would do like odd jobs throughout the town, which there was a lot to do because it was a seaside town, so I'd like, you know, get jobs at like this place, this place, this place. And I think here too. But I worked at a load of places, and just for pennies, because I was too young to actually be on the books at the time. So it was just cash in hand. <laughs> so I've been working since I, I've been working since I was 13 at this place, and I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have been allowed to do that. But I've been working for a while, for a long time. So this is the next image, uh, where I am posing next to a pair of titties, some goth ass titties, big titty goth girlfriend titties. And I actually didn't put that there. No, my girlfriend at the time, she had actually printed out a bunch of this titty stuff and she'd put it on the wall. It was like faded, you know, printer paper stuck on and right here, for some reason I am looking like Sonny Moore, who you, who is now Skrillex. So this is the edit that I use for my profile photo. I was good at Photoshop, as you can see, I was amazing at Photoshop. I was the best. Okay, wow, okay. So we got Crayola Jake here, uh, who was wearing his spiderweb arm warmers that used to go up to like here, I can't, I got them from a website called kinkyangel.co.uk, they do not do them anymore, which is a real shame, and I wore them all the time, and they used to keep slipping down, so what I would do is I'd pull them up, put my sleeve over it, and get a safety pin and pin them up, genius, absolute genius, wearing my limited edition tour t-shirt of deer and grey, I don't know where that went, I don't know where that went, it was my favorite, and I loved it, and you cannot get them anymore. And if anyone finds that specific Deer and Grey tour t-shirt, I think it was like Tour 08, or Tour, or tour it, was the, it was the Kerrang tour that they did with Bring Me the Horizon and MSI, which I went to, by the way. So this is me looking like pirate. I had dreadlocks. Black and green dreadlocks, uh, they were not like professionally made by anyone. They were like pre-made dreadlocks from like a site <laughs> that I can't, I can't remember, but it took so long to put my dreads in that I had to wear this bandana that you can actually just see a little bit of in that image. But I had to wear a bandana because the dreads had only been done on the side of my head, on the back, and not the top. So I just had like this little man bun on the top. So I, I wore a bandana for the first couple of days until I could put the rest in. Uh, and here's the original image. Okay, so right here I am at least 17 years old, maybe 18. I think maybe 17, 18, right here. So, as we can see, we have the bright green Stargazer eyeshadow, classic. And you can't see this because my brow bone is so low, which is why I don't bother anymore, but I'm actually wearing green fake lashes. And there's my green, black and green dreadlocks that were not, they were not put in very well. Next image. Ooh, this is when I got my green contact lenses. And I absolutely love the green eyes. I, I might get another pair of green eyes. This was me like doing a minimalist style because I think the J-Rock band I was listening to at the time had also done a minimalist style. So I, I'd also dialed it back a little. A little. Uh, just, just a little. Ah, yes. The very worst. The creme de la cringe of all my looks from back when I was, geez, this is a while ago now. This is probably, I'm 16 here, 17. It was still in college. But I bought these, I was obsessed with the colors uh, green and purple, which is why my dragon tattoo, which you can't see, uh, is green and purple. I got these neon green cheap ass hair extensions from uh, from Blue Banana. If you know what Blue Banana is, we're spark. I think, I think Blue Banana is still going. Blue Banana, I think, I don't know if you, you guys in the US have it, but it was our version of Hot Topic. Yeah. Not entirely sure what I was doing with the makeup here. Do you know what? I remember this. I remember this because I never did that makeup again because it looked really stupid. So that's all the photos. On my main account, I also had a band account, which had other photos on it. So let's have a look at my old band, shall we? Oh, <laughs> and here's a fun little extra bit, a little bonus. Whenever I left college, I got a job in a music studio. That was my first job out of music college. Great. And in the studio, I recorded a song by myself. It was the first ever song I had recorded entirely myself. I played actual drums, it was my dad's kit, I played all the bass, I played the guitars, I did the vocals. It was the first time I had ever done vocals on a song. So, 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna link you to that. I'm gonna link you to the first ever song I did. It's terrible. It is so bad. It is cringy, cringy bad. But it's on the internet, and I will link you to it at the end of this video. So let's go to my old band site, shall we? Let's uh, let's check them out. So I had this band, and we had uh, all these songs that we'd always rehearse, we'd always be rehearsing, but the only people that gave a shit about this band was me and me. <laughs> so every single week when the guys would show up to, to play to rehearse the songs with me, they had forgotten everything I showed them. So we never actually got to play live with Transcend, which sucked, because it was the one I put the most effort into. Here we are, we're on the Transcend. Who? Who, <laughs> boy. Oh boy. Okay, so I'm not gonna show you the photos of the people. Do you know what? I will, but I'll edit it, so to hide their faces. Okay, so here's me doing Alice Cooper makeup again, uh, with some greasy ass hair, fantastic. Oh, and sideburns, look at that. I do not remember having sideburns. Do I have sideburns, or is that a shadow? Anyway. Uh, wearing contact lenses again. This is actually on the train back from the Black Crusade tour. Uh, so the Black Crusade tour was Arch Enemy, Trivium, Dragon Force, where I met Sam, the guitarist. Shadows Fall with their and Machine Head. Machine Head uh, were headlining, and it was awesome. And I saw Davidian live, and it was so good. But I had to leave halfway through the set because I had to get the last train, and this was the image I took on that train. Oh, this is the awesome band art that I did all by myself. That's right, because I was so good at Photoshop. So that T, that's actually just a cutout. <laughs> And then I scanned it into the computer and then superimposed it onto this exquisitely edited image of a bridge and a river. And uh, your transcend, your time has come. So there you go. That was one of the first ever album arts that I ever did. Never used it. I just like making album art. Next. <laughs> okay, so if in, in these photos of me, that you are going to see exactly how metal I was. I was super metal elitist guy. I only listen to metal, nothing's changed, I still listen to metal, and only metal. Um, varying degrees of prog rock, prog metal, I listen to like a, a huge spectrum of metal, it's the only things that make me happy when I listen to them. <laughs> it's not I'm limiting myself, I just don't like listening to stuff that isn't metal, it just, it puts me to sleep, it puts me in a bad mood, and if it's pop music, it makes me agitated, so I, I, tr I can't, I can't listen to it. So right here, uh, was me just, th this is an image of me destroying my second ever guitar. So, my first ever guitar was this really awesome cherry red thing from this local place. Uh, so the second ever guitar was a, was a Fender Squire, um, which I hated because it was like this sort of pop indie rock, and I hated it. It was cream colored, and I, I was just like, this is the most unmetal guitar ever. And it had single coil pickups, and I hated it, and I still don't like them. So what I did was, I threw it off a cliff. <laughs> It, it, there's, this t there's this little town village called Tenby, and in Tenby is this huge cliff that overlooks the beach. Uh, but at the bottom is a car park that was never used anymore, so it was just like this huge drop and just nothing at the bottom. And you could go in there. So what I did was, is whenever I got my Jackson guitar, I took my Fender Squire, and I threw it off the cliff and smashed it. I would never do something so asinine now, something so juvenile, but at the time, it was cool as shit, and I took a photo of it, and I was like, metal as <laughs> I was metal as f all I listened to, and still, it still is, still is all I listen to. Never grow out of it. Metal never dies. So these two, uh, I guess also the the chick in the background there, these two uh, will remain nameless. But they were my best friends back in college. I do not speak to either one of them because as soon as college finished, neither one of them ever contacted me. <laughs> and I was like, great. Is the next? Oh boy. <laughs> oh yes. Now we're getting into the nitty gritty awful stuff. So this is probably the most horrendous image that has ever been taken of me. Right here, I am 15 years old. Mm, 16. 16 years old. This was actually a really fun day. This was a great day, and to this day, I still remember this as being a fantastic day. We went to like this the seaside town, Tembe, which is like this holiday destination. It's so nice. Uh, but we lived, I lived next to it. Um, and we went to the store and we got like, you know, uh, <laughs> sausages and Russell's burgers and uh, portable charcoal barbecues and stuff like that. We got like beer and stuff, uh, which one of the other guys got because I think the drummer was older than me, so he could buy alcohol. We went down to the beach, South Beach, which I used to go to all the time with all my other friends and just drink at. And so we had like a nice barbecue and it was really fun. Uh, but I, this was the one day down the beach that I hung out with people who actually liked me. <laughs> yeah, that's the artwork. Oh, 
Okay, so this right here is at the height of me being Michael Amott, apparently. <laughs> so this is just after I'd thrown the guitar off the cliff, and I went down, I picked it up, and I was like, yeah, look at how cool I am. Red hair and black eyeliner. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what I looked like back in 2008. Okay, so this is a little bit later on. Still wearing my super, my super favorite hoodie at the time. Still wearing the eyeliner, still got the long black hair. The long black hair didn't vanish until I was about... Not too long after this, actually. So yeah, this is actually at a house party in a place called Swansea in Wales. So moving on to the next image, which is... Lost of time. Ah, okay. So this is the track listing for the album that never happened. Do you know what? Most of it happened. So I was working at this music studio, and I did the drums and the guitars to all of these songs. But I only managed to do the vocals for one before I left and moved here. Which is a real shame. I really wish I'd managed to get this whole album done and I had like this whole archive of crap that I could <laughs> listen back to. The Crows They Gather, which is the song that exists. That song exists. If I can ever- Do you know what? I just came up with an amazing idea. So what I used to do, I used to have this little 4-track, this Boss BR 4-track, and I used to record all my song ideas, and I, I recorded hundreds of songs. And then, do you remember the original Xbox, the black and green brick? Uh, I used to put all the songs from that onto a CD and then onto the Xbox. So I I hope, I hope it's still in my dad's house, but I'll, ask, I'll see if I can get my sister to send it out. But there's like 80 songs on there and there's some great riffs. So I might see if I can find the riffs for these songs and redo them. You know, with my mixing abilities now. That'd be quite fun. And uh, there is the album artwork, which I actually did end up using for The Crows They Gather, which I will link you to at the end of this video. It's really bad. It's really, really bad. It's the first time I had ever, like, I've been practicing screaming, and, and I hadn't been practicing singing ever. This is the first time I ever screamed or sung, like, for a song. So you can criticize it if you want. I don't sound like that anymore, so whatever. And that concludes today's horrific trip through history. Unfortunately, not everything is in there. All of my photos from when I was in college with my friends, all the photos from me being like 14, 13, 15, uh, were all deleted whenever Bebo went under. And Bebo did have this thing where you could recover your images that they had deleted after they changed. They never sent them to me. And then I know that some people said that there's an app you can download and you can request all of your photos through there, but guess what? The app is also gone. So, those images, the only photos I ever had of me going through college with all my friends, are uh, gone. So thanks everyone for tuning in uh, and watching my video. Uh, I had a great day today because I made it a great day and I hope you guys are also making sure to make it a great day because you have more control over your day and your life than you think you do. I know when things start sucking and everything's going wrong, it's easy to lean into it and just be miserable, but you have to, even when the engines have failed, keep trying to pull up. So I'll see you in the next video, everyone. Goodbye.